This is part two of the conversation I had with Neil Ladler from Inside the Loud House yesterday. We're going over whether or not Fran Brown can solve the penalty issues that this team has had in the past, specifically under Dino Babers. We're also going to talk about conference realignment and, well, what happens if Syracuse football makes the college football playoff next season. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, everyone. Enjoy part two of this episode. You are locked on Syracuse. Your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You bring up an interesting point, and this isn't about a position group, but this is something that I'll also be curious about is how disciplined is this team? Not just in terms of like takeaways, but in terms of penalties. Because obviously that's been an Achilles Achilles heel in the past, you know, recent seasons. How how are they doing in terms of penalties, in terms of, you know, (laughs) penalties that are just frankly dumb and you know that are they commit just because they you know just an un, unforced is that the word um but you know in terms of holding or or delay of games or just nonsense i mean obviously pi you know and some of that stuff is different but how are they doing in the penalty department how are they doing you know obviously fran brown seems like he's really you know he seems like a really good guy high character but also discipline he's all about discipline and structure and all that so how are they going to be doing in, on the penalty you know, arena. I, the bar is, is, is pretty low on the penalty front because <laughs> it was, it was so bad under Dino Babers. Like the, the stats are there and the amount of penalties Syracuse would commit per game under Dino yep. Babers. It was so bad. Like they were never in the top half of the country in least penalties per game under Dino Babers. I don't think they were ever were ever. Even in 2018, they were pretty low in penalties in the country. It was, it was not good even in a good year. So the sure. bar is pretty low for Fran Brown to exceed it. There's like, plenty of room for improvement. Yeah, and it's, there's plenty know, of room. That's what I meant. Plenty just, of room for improvement. And, you know, sometimes I would feel like these penalties would just really come at really inopportune times or just really silly, boneheaded mental errors. And, again, listen, no one's perfect. I make mistakes in my my, my jobs too. But so do I. Just cl- cleaning that stuff up would be would be great just, you know, in terms of, not giving the opposition free yards or extending their drives or, or cutting their own drives when they're on offense short. So I'll be curious. I mean, that's not a position group per se, but yeah. that's something that I'm curious to see how that pans out. And usually when we're talking about penalties, it, it's always like a cliche. You know, I played hockey growing up and the classic saying is, you know, stay out of the box, right? You don't want to right. take penalties and everything like that. And, and football, like, obviously you don't want to commit penalties, right? But no, this is a team that it's a legitimate thing we got to talk about here because yep. under Dino Babers, they were committing a lot of penalties. So like under Fran Brown, are they, are they going to be similar to that? Are they going to yeah. be better in, in, in clock situations now? Because they weren't good at that either under Dino Babers. Right. Those are all things that I look at with Fran Brown, and I'm like, all right, you can recruit. You got you got good talent in there, and I also give him a lot of credit for keeping a lot of the talent. Like he kept the Ronde Gatsby, he kept LeQuint Allen, he Barron. kept Marlo Wax. Justin Barron was filling out transfer portal papers I saw that. and yeah. convinced him to come back. Like you got all, you got the talent. The the it's not as talented as an Alabama or a Michigan or Ohio State. We, we know that. There, it's 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 the upside it's, is there. Yeah. The so question let's, is how let's see how they play. play. Yeah, let's see how they how play. Yeah, yeah. Because a couple of years ago, and I've mentioned this so many times on the podcast, and a lot of people are probably going to remember it. That penalty against Clemson, Ugh. third and twenty-five. Like these these penalties, they can change games. They kill. They kill games. They can, they kill momentum in seasons. They they, they can. Do. Yeah, they can. They do. Yeah. All right. Well. Overall, we kind of left off on a sour note, so let's leave off on a positive note let's here. Let's do it. Let's Come leave on, on a positive you know note. Me. Neil, like what's your to... record prediction real quick? 12-0, and 0, man. Let's go. <laughs> All right, 12-0. Uh, real, I, real. I, I, I mean, if you really think 12-0, and 0, fine. But Well, I mean, you know me. I'm I'm overtly positive. Let's go to 16-0. Like... and 0. Yeah, or 15 16-0, and 0. And 0, right. CFP, baby. Um, I think 
I know I did something on Loud House like in January, just super early. And I think at that point I had him at nine and three. I'm like kind of in the eight to four, nine and three range, but it wouldn't surprise me if they go seven and five or maybe even 10 and two. I don't, I think they'll win at least seven given the schedule and assuming injury, no injuries, lack of injuries. Are they going to win more than 10? I guess they could, but I'm in the eight to nine range right now. And hey, listen, even with a easy schedule on paper, if they win nine games and go to a nice bowl and they and they and they fare well, that's a really successful first season. I agree. I maybe am a slight step below you because you're in eight to nine. I'm in seven to eight. eight. So how about we meet in the middle and we both say eight? Eight and four, win the bowl game, nine and four. Maybe I don't I don't really care about the bowl game result. I don't care about the the bowl game results like cool, but at the same time, like a lot of players are resting anyway. Yeah, I know. Kind of bowl what, games it, aren't it, it the used same. to really mean more than what it means now. Oh, with all yeah, the especially off-outs. with the whole trend and the, the athletes sitting out, like that's yep. almost like a tryout game for younger players. That that's essentially what it's come down to. It's I just I know it's it's not the like same. Like when Syracuse got blown out last year in the bowl game, like I know well, we obviously don't want to be embarrassed, and th- that was not. Yeah, fun. but you got to take that with such context. Like, but it's like, nah. I mean, I remember when. Listen, we're going off on a little tangent here, but I remember with uh, Florida State, and when they didn't get to, into the college football playoff, neither did Georgia. Yep. So those were like the two teams that were left out of the playoff last year, and they played right. in a bowl game, and Georgia killed. Them. Yep. Like Georgia smoked them in the bowl game and everyone was like, see, like that's justification for leaving out Florida State. But they didn't I remember play. being like, look, I was also in the camp that Florida State shouldn't have been in the playoff and they weren't. But if you're using the bowl game as a barometer for it, like everyone for Florida State basically sat out that no game. One played. Everyone, yeah, none of their players were playing. Nah. Like, I mean, it was, a, it was a bad show. It was a bad showing and, you know, sour grapes. Maybe uh, I could be swayed either well, way. Of course it's them. sour grapes. Now they're trying right. to leave the conference. Right. Well, if they want to leave, by all means, just go. <laughs> well, they, they, that's the thing. I mean, we're really going on a tangent here. I'm probably going to split this into two parts. How about that? Dude, um, do what you got to do, brother. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they're trying to leave the conference for free. Uh, but if they wanted to leave right now, they can pay like, Six hundred million dollars yeah, to do lot. it, yeah, and the yeah. funny part is, is that unless the ACC were to dissolve, uh, I don't think if they were to leave that the SEC or the Big Ten would take them, and so therefore they'd be paying six hundred million dollars to move what to the Big Twelve. I mean, you know, you've seen you've that's seen what they're going to do, right? You see reports uh, on this stuff; it's all speculation. I'm not plugged in; I don't pretend to be. But you know, some of the recent chatter was that if you know, Clemson and Florida State were able to get out or, or or whatever that the SEC and the Big Ten doesn't even necessarily want them right now. So maybe is, is moving to the Big 12, is that is that a lateral move? I don't know. I don't even know. if it's a slight – it, even if you were to say the Big 12 is a slight upgrade over the ACC, like, okay, let's say it's a slight upgrade. Mm-hmm. You're going to pay $600 million for a slight upgrade. I behooves me. That's why they're – well, that's why they're mm-hmm. suing yeah, it's just such a bad. It, you know, again, I know we're 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 going off here, but it's it don't just, worry. I'm going to split this into two. Yeah, years. no, to me, Jackson, it's like the whole conference. Well, you know, listen, I went to Q's in the late '90s, so I'm an old school Big East guy. Uh, been following basketball and football since the '80s. So, so you know, even for me, it's still like weird that they're in the ACC, but it's been ten years, so it is what it is. And obviously, a lot of these realignment moves now have nothing to do with geographic proximity or regional rivalries. It's all about football television contracts. Um, but it's sad, you know, and I know we live in a democracy and, and uh, some would say a litigious society, whatever, but it, I mean, it's kind of gross to see, you know, we're starting off this football season. They got an expanded CFP, you've got NIL and everything. And and, and you know, and, and and there's these lawsuits going on. I mean, I mean that stuff's a little over my head, but you know, the grant of rights with ESPN is the grant of rights. I don't know if it's they're going to be able to break that, but it's just it's just a shame because I love I love college sports, I love college football and basketball, and you know, to kind of have that cloud hanging over the ACC's head, and because I mean, it's still a good conference. Yeah, it's not the SEC, it's not the Big Ten. Um, from a football standpoint, from a basketball standpoint, you know. 
Obviously, you've got Duke and North Carolina. But, I mean, you know, Virginia won a couple of years ago. If Syracuse could get back to where they used to be. Louisville won, you know, in 2013, to, regardless of what the NCAA says now. I mean, they're – Well, they're, yeah, that, that I've always gotten a kick out of. Like, oh, we're going to strip the, the title away. I'm like, I, okay. So, like, let me when tell I you go something. look online, like, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me tell you something, brother. I was at the 2013 Final Four, yep. you know, because Syracuse was in it. And yep. it was a bucket list item for me to go when they got in. And it was brutal when they lost to Michigan in the in the uh, in the semis. But they weren't um, going to. I was there. Anyway. I was there. Louisville beat Michigan. They won the national title. So vacating all that stuff is garbage to me. But I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But Fanduel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. And if you're itching for football season like I am, guess what? FanDuel has released the odds for Syracuse's first game against Ohio. The Orange are now 17 and a half point favorites to get the W. You think the Orange are going to cover? Well, you can bet it right now on FanDuel. Now, if you want to play it safe, Syracuse's money line is minus 950. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you for making Locked On Syracuse your first listener of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On College Football Podcast. Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron with discussion on the upcoming season and the ever-changing landscape of college athletics, including conference realignment, the transfer portal, NIL, new college football expanded playoffs, and more. Locked On College Football is available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Part of Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens with Florida State Clemson. They're obviously in the ACC for now, and it just kind of like leaves a bad taste in your mouth. They're like suing the conference that they're playing. It just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, I mean, uh, the, the, the ACC's credit, they're, they're kind of just like, all right, like sue us. Like, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll fight it tooth or nail. And I mean, it sounds like they feel pretty, again, I'm not a legal expert, but it sounds like they feel pretty confident that the, you know, the grant of rights that extends for a while with ESPN for, t- you know, TV stuff is is pretty solid, pretty ironclad. So, yeah, pay, pay your exit fee and we'll see who wants to take you or just you know, like end this nonsense and just, you know, the, the, the playoff is expanded now. They're going to have opportunities to get in. It's just they want more money. I get that, it. That's what it money is it. king. At the end of it, it's all about money. Like it's yeah, all and obviously there's everything the, the almighty the, dollar. But at the same sure. time, it's like, man, like well, and you know, there's new factors now, obviously, again with NIL and the portal, but then obviously this, you know, settlement, um, antitrust case settlements, you know, where there's gonna be revenue sharing with with college athletes in the future, that that obviously is a new thing as well. So I mean it, college sports is like you know the minor leagues now it's 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 not i mean they're not student athletes i mean they're going to school they're students but are they student athletes they're they're semi pros that's right. at least in the in the major ones right. uh, and the major ones can differ depending on the college so but for the most part across the country the major sports are going to be football and men's basketball and then there's other schools that are going to have miscellaneous sports in there uh, hockey can be big in some schools. Mm-hmm. Um, baseball is especially big. Softball is especially mm-hmm. big in the South. Women's uh, for, basketball for the most part, is getting more and more popular. Um, they just the NCAA just announced yesterday that they're going to have, you know, revenue unit sharing with um, women's basketball as a result of the, you know, from stemming from the the NCAA tournament, which is is a good thing as well. Yeah, no, it's it's a crazy time. It really is, and. You know, it's funny because I write, you know, about the realignment stuff here and there and obviously just kind of, you know, follow it. But, um, you know, I put stuff on our social media channels. People are even this week, people are just like, oh, you know, Syracuse is going to be left. You know, they're you know, the the music's going to stop and they're not going to have a seat at any table. And I'm like, I don't know. That's not true. I don't I don't see that at all. I mean, we're not going to get a seat at the table at the in the in the SEC. 
Um, and the reason why I say the the SEC is because you don't really need to be in the region anymore to be in a conference. Right. Um, they're not going to, but they're not going to get a seat at the table there. Uh, probably not the Big Ten either. Maybe if it was like ten years ago with Maryland, they could have had a chance at it. Um, right. But right. not anymore right. with the Big Ten. So then maybe the Big Twelve. I don't know. Uh, but I think the Big East would take them back. Then what do you do with football, man? They got to get enough. They'd have to get some other teams with football programs to yeah. to. But that you know, I don't know that how they'd be viewed in terms of you know the CFP and all that. And it's again, it's all about TV contracts and TV revenue and you know CFP stuff. And so who knows? But you know, I don't think the ACC is disbanding anytime soon. And um, you know, the legal legal stuff will just play out. I'm just excited for the season. I think it's um, you know, I <laughs> to get we back to that. Huge, yeah, we that huge uh, here about, yeah. Um, it's okay. Yeah. No, I could talk it's about that stuff forever. Yeah, it is. I know, but college football. I mean, you know, it's it, it'll be a fun season with the expanded CFP. I agree with you. Bowls are like eh, they don't mean as much, but you know, up on the hill, it's um making them means a lot. Making them cool. means something. The actual result of the game. I mean, yeah, like, take context. I, I I personally, if, if Syracuse doesn't make the CFP or one of the New Year's Six or whatever they're called, um. I want them to be like in the Duke's Mayo Bowl so like they can win that and then like they can dump like a whole thing of mayonnaise all over Fran Brown. Like I just I don't know, it'd just be funny because he'd he'd have fun with it. Or like the Pop Tart bowl, do they like let him jump into like a big thing of Pop Tarts or how does that work? I don't know. What I don't know. What about Cheez Its? I like like Cheez Its is one of my I, favorite. I'm snacks. personally in I love Cheez Its. I Mega love Cheez Its. So, man. like, making the Cheez It bowl would be fun. I'd, I'd definitely eat some Cheez Its. Uh, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Let's do that. But Let's what was the that. bowl that they were in last year? They they haven't really been in a bowl that has like Boca a Boca Raton name. bowl. Yeah. See, like, that doesn't have a cool name to it. Where, where, when are we going to get like a mayo bowl or like a Gatorade bowl or something? There like, something go. where if we win, we can pour like something funny on, on the coach. Or they get in the orange bowl and orange juice, orange. Syracuse well, the or orange. I think the orange bowl is going to be a playoff bowl. Yeah, it's part of the CFP. Yeah. yeah. So, so, like in that sense, you know, if it's part of the CFP, then then all bets are off. I mean, you have to win the bowl game. I mean, it's part of the playoffs. What, what would what would happen if Syracuse made the CFP this year? Would like everyone's head explode up in Central New York? Like, what would happen? I, so I'm going to give you the the really the really awesome answer, which is that we're just going to have so much fun, and regardless of what happens. It's going to be a blast to cover it. I mean, I, I don't think they would win, um, but it would be really fun. It would be really would cool be. to see the team in that spotlight and a first-year head coach. Now here's where I kind of get to the, the the trade-off here, and I think we'd all take the trade-off. Mm -hmm. uh, Fran Brown's going to be the number one coaching com uh, commodity on the market. Yeah, yeah. He would. Yeah. He, he, he would. No question. If you're in your first year and you take a program like Syracuse, to the college football playoff, right? Even though it's twelve teams, you're you're the number one candidate on everyone's mind. You're a great recruiter, and you just won games with Syracuse. Not only did you win games, you didn't just go eight and four. You, you didn't go nine. No, no, no. You went probably ten and two or eleven and one. You'd have to win at least ten to get in. Yeah, yeah. at least ten. And if they go ten and two, they're going to have to win the ACC. So basically, they have to win eleven games. Counting the ACC championship. If they do that this season, and I think we'd all take that trade, Fran Brown's going to be the number one coaching commodity on the market. And I know what he has said. He said he's he coaching said Syracuse what for Everyone life. wants to hear. Right, he wants right. to be with Syracuse for, for life. life and yep, everything right, like right. that. I get it. Sure. Sure. But the almighty dollar. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, uh, you know, if you – if he did what that scenario and 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 got a just a you know a ridiculous all I mean you I wouldn't really like hold him to him like, oh he's, I mean no, I, it, that's what I'm saying that, I'm not changed, man statement. I would I would be I would I would be bummed but I would be like you go do you my man good oh, for yeah. you well yeah. deserved yeah. I, yeah it would be totally well deserved and yeah. I think everyone would accept it and for those that might be thinking I'm talking crazy I'm not talking crazy I'm telling you I've seen this happen all the time with coaches and that's why I don't I mean, I listen to what they say, but at the same time, I don't hold them necessarily to that standard because we all have to make decisions that are best for ourselves. And if they make the college football playoff and a big-time SEC program comes calling and says, hey, 
we can make you the highest paid coach in all of college football. And on top of that, you're going to have all the resources that an SEC yeah, program sure. might have sure. or a Big Ten program might have. Then he might, he could go. Like, it's possible. I mean, he did come from the SEC. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But once again, Neil, I, good, I think we take that trade, right? It'd be a good problem to have. It'd be a good problem to have. Um, we, I, we would yeah. take the trade of making the college football playoff and have to worry about getting a new head coach. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. not make the college football playoff. I mean, even though they have a good year, but not make it and have another year of Fran Brown. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's probably a stretch um, that that's going to happen this year. But who the heck knows? But again, you know, eight, nine wins, looking good, just being disciplined, you know, keeping, avoiding the injury bug, just will be great for recruiting, you know, in years out. And, um, you know, again, let's remember Fran Brown, uh, he's a first year head coach and he's a first time head coach. That doesn't mean he's can't be great, but it's of course, but he, he's not the first coach. <laughs> I mean, every head coach at one point was a first year and a yeah. first time. So, you know, <laughs> like people, you know, Nick Saban spent time here at Syracuse. He wasn't he the did. head coach. He did. Uh, I was just recently watching the, the hard knocks of the Chicago Bears. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you, there's a reason why I'm bringing this up and with Fran Brown, because it's going to relate. Nick Saban, I believe his first head coaching job in college was at Toledo. I believe so. It was at Toledo. And he's so. been to a ton of other places. I think of a guy like Urban, My- Urban Meyer, right? He's been to a ton of places. Mm-hmm. Florida, Ohio State. But I believe he – where mm-hmm. did he get his calling card? Was it Bowling Green U- or Utah? Uh, he Utah. Utah. A, he did well at Utah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Utah. So yeah. the point being yeah. is that, like, even the great head coaches, like, it, it trust it would be – awesome if Fran Brown leads this team to not only sustain success, but then stays for a very, very long time. We'd be be very, very happy. And of course we'd want to keep them. But a lot of times with these coaches, they're going to take other opportunities. Absolutely. And no one is taking an opportunity and going to say to the media, Hey, I'm, I only want to be here for a few years and then go to the, a a different school. No, no one's ever going to say that. Of course not. Of course not. But I mean, with Fran, I mean, I well, a couple of things. I think he's a, a very genuine person. I think he 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 doesn't blow smoke. You know, he's also from New Jersey. I think he's very fond of Syracuse. The, and, you know, the old Biggie. You know, he he he. I think this was a real, I don't want to say dream job for him, but I I think he was when he was offered this, he was like, this is this is my jam. This is um this is what I want. I, again, things could change down the road. You know, for him in a in a positive way. But um, I, I think he genuinely, you know, is very fond of, of Syracuse University and, and of, uh, well, not the B, it's, we're in the ACC now, but, you know, the Northeast, you know, yep. playing in the Northeast and that sort of thing. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just, I, I, it, I understand that. I, I, it's not that I don't believe that. It's that I look at the history of coaching across college football and what happens when a, a coach succeeds tremendously at a program, mm-hmm. typically he'll then leave. Who That's was it? it? Was it a fickle at, at Cincinnati who led them to the playoff, right? Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. did he go? I honestly don't remember. He, he went somewhere big. He went, he went somewhere big. It I, might not have been the season after the playoff, but it was the season prior. Look up where Luke fickle is the head coach. Wisconsin. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I'm sure Luke Fickle, when he when he was announced as the head coach of Cincinnati, was like, man, I only want to be here for a few years, and then I want to leave. I'm sure he didn't say that. But, mm-hmm. again, mm-hmm. will we take that trade? Yes, yeah. because it's a college football playoff berth. We'll take the trade. I mean, Fran Brown can be here 10 years, and they they maybe they do, maybe they don't make the playoffs. So we'll mm-hmm. take it in year one and then leave. <laughs> we'll absolutely take that scenario because they're not guaranteed to ever make it. It's one thing to watch baseball on TV that at times can get pretty boring, but going to a game in person is an awesome experience. And I'm looking forward to watching the Mets for the rest of this summer. And the way I'll be able to watch the Mets in person is by using Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace in Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. 
Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. All you have to do is go to game time and search the team you want to see of your choosing. It can be MLB or any league for that matter, and ticket options will appear right away. My favorite part is the all-in pricing feature. Toggling this feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Lockdown College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Right, right, right. Yeah. We still got yeah. a little bit of time here since I'm we got to make it happen, man. Now we got now that we pumped it up, they got to make it. Gotta I make hope, it. man. If they made it, that was a great question you asked. What would happen? Because <laughs> I've been holding that in for a long time, mm-hmm. a long time. Because I have a lot of friends who went to big time football schools, mm-hmm. Florida, mm-hmm. Texas. I know sure. Florida's in a downward spiral, but. You know, they're one of those SEC they're, programs. They're still, that, big, they're still a big brand. They're a, 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 eventually they're going to be good again. They have a no. brutal schedule. Oh, there's year. everyone in the SEC has a brutal schedule. brutal schedule. But I remember saying to them, I mean, I'm sure that I forgot the top of who the Texas coach is. I think it's Sarkeesian. I mean, he's safe, right? But, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, I keep on saying, I keep on joking around with my Florida fan, or friends that uh, Billy, Billy Napier is a lame duck there or he's a sitting duck. Like he's mm-hmm, just waiting to get mm-hmm. fired. Uh, because they're not going to have a good year. They're going to go like four and eight or five and seven. And then he's gone because that'll be another bad season. Then they're going to be looking for a coach. And I was like, you know, it would be really funny if Syracuse has some sort of crazy year. You know, as this crazy, I mean, I would look at that. <laughs> I'm talking about it on August 7th here, talking about yeah. Fran Brown potentially leaving. I don't want to speculate him leaving, though. I'm no. just saying what I'm answering your question yeah. as to what yeah, would happen no, if this makes the playoff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, hey, listen, we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out. Uh, as we were saying off air, you know, they've got Ohio, but then I believe week two is Georgia Tech, which is Georgia you know, Tech. kind of a, a you then know, a Stanford. Team. Stanford, you know, is not good, but they're, they are ACC. So, yeah, yeah. You can't, you, you can never take your foot off the gas. No. But you like you can't in Division One. You can't do it. But at the same time, I mean, when they're playing UConn, like UConn. Okay, so Luther fair. and Holy Cross, like, come on. That UNLV game is going to be that will not. I mean, you know, that one would be tough. Yeah, but they, they were aside, pretty good last year. They got a bunch of votes in the coaches' poll. I mean, obviously, preseason polls don't mean much, but they were pretty good. And you know, and it's out, it's out west. So I mean. I feel like I, when I did my projection a while back, I, I projected Syracuse to win, but that's, I don't want to call it a trap game, but that won't be, that's not a cakewalk. That'll, that'll, no. that'll be a tough, but game. that's, that's their like one non-conference game that I, that I can see them losing. So the other, the other three, three? across Ohio and Yukon. Yeah. I, I, I mean, they're going to be stunned if they lost any of those, not to be. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the one that's most likely if you were to pick out of those three is Ohio. They're only like, 16 point favorites ish on there the other ones like listen if we're losing to yukon and we're losing the holy cross we got a lot bigger fish to fry uh, you know call me crazy or homer or whatever i think syracuse on august 31st is going to come out of the gates and absolutely just blow out ohio i think they're oh, going to be I, safe. I actually agree I, with you not, not 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 because ohio is like a terrible team i just think that the the, the anticipation I think they're just, you know, especially with, the, you know, if the crowds just gets into it, they get a quick touchdown, a quick to whatever, like they're just going to, you know, all, all, all cylinders will be firing. I could be wrong. We'll see. But um, no, I yeah. agree with you on that. It's yeah. going to be similar to what it was with 2022. I remember they opened the season against Louisville mm-hmm. and it was Malik Cunningham, a quarterback, and that yeah. was, was going to be a tough game. Syracuse yeah. might've been an underdog in that game. They spanked him. They spanked like, them. Spanked them. Was it like 31 to 7? 31 to 7. It didn't feel like 31 to 7. It felt they a lot worse it. than that. They absolutely killed crushed them. them. Yeah. They killed them. Yeah. And yeah. I I agree. I, I agree with you. I think it's gonna be something similar with Ohio, except I think it's gonna be worse because there Ohio's not as good as that Louisville team was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think it's gonna be worse. And I don't want to compare it to last year against who they opened was it Colgate they opened the season against? Ohio's definitely a step above 
Colgate. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, mean, I don't want to. I don't want to compare it to that because no, no, even when no. they blew out Colgate, I don't. Really, I, I mean, I know from my perspective when they blew out Colgate, I didn't care too much because I was like, it's it's Colgate. Like you're that's what you, it's like if they were to blow out Holy Cross this year, it's like oh, uh, cool. Like next, I mean, the way I look at those non-conference games against not super great teams is, you know, are, are they playing crisp? Are they playing disciplined? Yeah, so fine, the final score, whatever. But are guys, are they, you know, is Kyle McCord completing his passes? Are they not committing turnovers? Are they not committing penalty? You know, just like playing disciplined ball, yeah. like is they're expected to to blow. You just want to be focused and just you know yeah. on point, and then just move on. But the ACC, you know. Obviously, Syracuse doesn't play some of the you know the the, the top tier preseason teams, but it, it will be interesting to see the way the conference you know pans out. Obviously, you know Florida State and Clemson, a lot of people think will be at the top. But then you got like Miami, Louisville, NC State. But then you got like Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech, and SMU could surprise some folks. And you know Boston College got a first place vote in the ACC preseason. That makes sense. So, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't me. I didn't vote. Um, but, um, but it will be interesting to see how kind of the, the kind of like the middle of it kind of all, you know, shapes out. Um, I, I personally think Syracuse could, could go on a run and be in the top four or five. I do. Um, I don't think they're going to be 12. Um, the, the question is what the conference record would be, because if they were to go eight and four, let's say that they go eight and four and they go four and oh in their non-con, that means they went four four and four four. in the conference. So where would four and four in the conference slot them? I think it's tough to project standings in that regard because it's like, you know, we say they go eight and four, but you know, they beat UNLV. That's the one swing game in the non-con. If they beat UNLV, they're four and oh in the non-con. So that means they went four and four in the conference. Where is four and four in the conference on the standings? It could be like eighth, ninth, 10th. But at the same time, I mean, if they're all jumbled together, then really what is the difference? Not much, not much. And their, you know, their their strength of schedule might not be as high as some of the other teams in the conference just based on the fact that they don't play, you know, some of those quote unquote top teams. So I don't I I I, I would hope that they go at least five and three in the conference. That would be my hope. I would hope so too. If they go five and three in the conference. Unless they lose to UNLV, that means their record would be nine and three. See, I called it. We well, take it, right? <laughs> I, That's I, the thing. They might lose to UNLV on the road, so then they say eight, eight and four. I, I you know, it, it, this is all obviously speculation, and we'll have to see how they play the first few games and what UNLV does its first few games. But that is not going to be an easy game. No, I don't think so. No, nope. so, nope. so. Georgia yeah. Tech, though, in my opinion. Is going that's to be the a, that's that's the test. That's like, a tough you're going to beat Ohio, test. and in our opinion, like they're probably going to blow them out. Georgia Tech at home, I think they're going to win that game, but they they could lose. It's right? a it's a it's it won't be an easy game. It won't no, be easy. it Georgia won't. Georgia Tech, if, you know, is getting some 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 preseason buzz. Is it not necessarily a team that's going to win the ACC, but a team that could be kind of up on, on the up and up? So yeah. like. But I will say this: If they were to blow out Georgia Tech, that would then I be think it's gonna, very. It's gonna completely eye-opening. change the outlook of this team. We're gonna we're gonna look at it and be like eight and four, nine. I might. I would probably then need to amend my prediction and say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, nine and three at minimum at that point. If they blow out Georgia Tech, now if they win that game by ten points or whatever, and it doesn't really, and it's kind of close back and mm-hmm. forth, I would say that I probably was. That, that we were probably on point you mm-hmm. know, with their projection. You know, you, you do well against Georgia. You win against Georgia Tech at home, close game. What would happen if it was on the road? Maybe it goes the other direction. But a close game at home, you win. So then we'll be probably pretty accurate on it. I think that's where we're – is that where you're at? Like you think it's going to be a win, but it might be close? I think they're going to win. But, yeah, I think it could be relatively close. And, and that brings up the larger point that Syracuse – is I feel I can't remember it was CBS Sport one of the national media outlets had like an article earlier this year and I, I think I piggybacked off it with a, with a piece on Loud House talking about like teams that are like the biggest mysteries coming into the season and Syracuse is on there and that's necessarily a criticism it's a first year head coach first time head coach relatively 
you know, made over staff and a significantly overhauled roster, recency bias with a team that's made two bowls but hasn't been super great in recent years and a favorable schedule on paper, but we don't know how all this is going to shake out. So I agree. If they if they go into week two against a Georgia Tech team that looks like it could be pretty solid in the ACC and they absolutely whoop them, even at, you know, home, um, that, like, I don't want to say, like, silence the critics, but it, that's like, all right, this team can do it. This team can play. Let's go, you know? I mean, we'll, we'll see. Let's yeah. – I, I just want – I just – I don't want to rush through summer, but I just want to see some freaking games. <laughs> no, I'm ready to rush through summer. I'm ready. We're 24 days away. I don't want to be 24. 24 days away is still over three weeks. So I know. I, I mean, know. it's going to be so much fun. Neil, thank you so much for taking the time on this two-parter. Thank you for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On College Football Podcasts. From NIL deals to never-ending conference realignment rumors, Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron. You can find the link to Locked On College Football in the description so you don't need to search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.